G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing our off-season series of going through each team in the league and projecting what their best 22 might look like in three years from now. The benefit of it is we can sort of project, you know, like what, what players are likely to be around in three years, what list gaps do various clubs have, and uh, what can they do to prevent some problems that might arise in three years. That's kind of the other interesting part of it as well. And today we've got one of the more interesting clubs that I was most excited to do in the Cats, uh, because obviously they're kind of going through a bit of a list transition or whether Cats fans will agree right now they're in a list transition. I think when you look at the amount of players who are unlikely to be there in three years time, it's an interesting time for the Cats to try and uh, mitigate potentially a big drop off, which to be fair, they are so good at doing. And it gives us a good idea, you know, exactly what, what danger are, are the Cats in in three years time. It's obviously one of the oldest teams in the comp. I think second oldest in the, my recent video where I talked about it. Equally, they've spent a lot of time over the last three years getting in these, you know, 18 year old prospects. They've been trading in young gun players. And now it's it's kind of fun to look at what the team will look like in three years. So before I get into it, I will ask you to consider subscribing to this YouTube channel for plenty of AFL content. I've been daily AFL content for about three months now, just about. And I continue to work through the off season, sort of doing uh, analysis videos and, and previewing what might happen in 2024 as well. So if that sounds like your sort of thing, this is a great channel to subscribe to. Anyway, let's talk about the Geelong football club now the first part of this process as I've done in every video is work through exactly what players are pretty much certainly not going to be on the list in three years time from a retirement point of view we're not projecting projecting trades or anything like that so let's talk about some of the veterans they've got on their list who are likely to have been retired in three years let's start with Tom Hawkins he'll be 38 I think that's fair to suggest Zach Tui at 37 Paddy Dangerfield will be 36 by round one but will be nearly 37 in 2027 uh, Reece Stanley at 36 Blitzarbs 36 Gary Rowan Mitch Duncan will be 35 even Cam Guthrie potentially we know but the Cats players do play pretty deep into their careers, but Cam Guthrie at 34, I've excluded from now. Same thing with Jed Buse at 33. So a fair bit of experience there. And I'll talk about the 30-plus-year-old uh, players that will still be on the list in that time. Let's start with Tom Stewart. I originally was pretty confident he was going to be there. I woke up to some news this morning. Tom Stewart signed a three-year deal to the end of 2027 anyway, so we can assume he's going to be in this team, but he will be 34 during that season. Uh, Jeremy Cameron will be nearly 34. I've kept him around if you extrapolate how you know other players there have played so deep into their careers, and considering how good Jeremy Cameron still is, I've erred on the side of keeping him around. Collar Jasny at 31, probably still there. Tom Atkins at 31, and Mark O'Connor will be 30 as well. So with that all in mind, let's have a crack at projecting what their best 22 slash 24, I always do a six-man bench with these videos, uh, it will look like three years from now. So like I do in every video, I'll quickly run through what all the colors and numbers mean. Uh, obviously, you got 24 players there. The ones in green are the ones I'm pretty confident about in terms of them being, still be on the list, let alone in the best 24 uh, in three years from now. And the ones in yellow, I'm just not 100% sure whether they're going to be there. Now, it might not be a quality thing. I've left Jeremy Cameron in yellow there because, you know, he might he might have retired by then at 290-odd games or whatever. And there's a few speculative types like Toby Conway in the ruck there. He's only played one game at AFL. I think that's fair to suggest. Collar Jasny as well. There's a bit of competition for like those uh, medium-sized defenders. He's a little bit iffy, but then again, you could say that about others. I'm sure it's not consistent, um, the criteria for green and yellow, but I've just had a crack. But what you will see there is there is a lot of green there, which means that I think the Cats have actually a little bit better placed than I thought they were, particularly forward of center. But uh, quickly, the numbers will be their age by round one of 2027, and the second number there is roughly an estimate of how many games experience they'll have. So with that all in mind, let's talk about this team. Now, that back six looks pretty pretty damn well, it looks pretty damn green, doesn't it? And I'll go through it individually. So Tom Stewart, he's going to be contracted. He's started his career late for a start. Still an absolute star of the comp. So, you know, safe bet he's there. And the tall backs, I've gone with De Koning and Connor O'Sullivan because the, of the other types that are likely still be uh, around, the Emerson Jecker, I'd, I'd rather see a 21-year-old Connor O'Sullivan having a crack, and I, I got a feeling they might give him some games early. Then there's Zach Guthrie, Jack Henry. These guys are pretty entrenched in their best 22 as it currently stands, and Jack Bowes, I think, will... He, he might be, not be a lock right at the moment, but I think by the time he's 29, I'll back him in to still be there with guys like, you know, Mark O'Connor and Collar Jasny on the bench there. So let's talk about the midfield. This is the interesting one and, and probably the part of the ground where we see the most transition. So we got Tom Atkins there, you know, with Guthrie gone uh, as the senior uh, midfielder there. 
And the other two on ballers, I've gone with Jai Clark and Tanner Bruin. Tanner Bruin has probably shown, well, certainly shown more at AFL level than someone like a Jai Clark. Jai Clark is fairly unproven, yet he was a high draft pick, and I'm pretty confident they're at least going to be trying to persevere with him in three years, even if he's no good. Uh, but I do think he will be good. So that's the, the mix I've gone there. So it's Tom Atkins, the most experienced, with Clark and Brun there, with Mitch Nevitt probably the next cab off the rank. I think he's played about 10 games at AFL level to date. So we're seeing a pretty raw midfield there. And while I see the top-end talent potentially, like Jai Clark and Tanner Brun at times have looked like guns and Tom Atkins at his best well he was a very valuable player in their premiership year so with those guys again it's a little bit speculative um, but that probably highlights the first part of the ground they could bolster through trade or free agency potentially I've gone with the wings of Holmes like I know Holmes is talk of him transitioning into a more legitimate center square on baller uh, and that could still happen but I've just put him on the wing because that's more natural to him than it is a Jai Clark for instance and Sean Manor as well at 29 I got a funny feeling he's going to be there. He's a ready-made uh, midfield forward. What exactly his best position at AFL level is, I'm not too sure. Uh, but it was a pretty talented forward line in terms of medium-sized forwards in particular, or small. So we'll go through that quickly. Now, there's actually quite a, a settled nature to a lot of the medium-sized types as well. But Tyson Stengel is still only going to be 28 in three years, as will Grian Myers. And these guys have both uh, not both been All-Australian, but Grian Myers had a very good season last year. Ollie Henry looks like a young gun of the comp. I'm very confident about him being arguably one of their best young players in three years. And then Brad Close at 28 as well. So there's not too much coming out of that team, obviously, the exception of Tom Hawkins. Jeremy Cameron, again... See, if he's not there, this is where the key forwards look a little bit weak because Shannon Neal has shown a bit at AFL level, hasn't played that much, and he's the next cab off the rank, you know, post-Hawkins. Jeremy Cameron, I think it will be there. If not, it's probably someone like Phoenix Foster. I don't know too much about the, the rest of their key forward stocks, but uh, Phoenix Foster was probably the next clear option that I could find. So addressing that will be important via trade or free agency. But if they want to draft one, they probably want to draft it soon uh, because, you know, in three years' time, you don't want to have an 18-year-old key forward in that team. So that's another part. So I'd say a genuine on baller and, you know, someone in their forward line that they can be confident about. They could unearth Phoenix Foster as an underrated guy at the comp. We do know that they tried to go for Ollie Lord from Port Adelaide. That move makes sense, uh, but we'll see what happens. As for their bench options, you've got uh, Nevitt, like I said, and Mitch Edwards, again, may or may not be ready in three years' time because he is a raw, skinny ruckman. However, at 21, he would have had a bit of experience. And you also factor in Geelong's ruck stocks are not super strong. At the moment, it's uh, Reece Stanley. Sorry, his name escaped me for a minute there. Reece Stanley. And past that, it's Toby Conway, who looks like a good young prospect. And I do like Mitch Edwards, but it's going to be a pretty young ruck uh, situation. So I don't know if they stopgap that situation by trading in a, a bit of a journeyman. We know Sean Darcy is now off the market. Um, do they go for someone? I don't know how far off Reece Stanley is from retiring. But Toby Conway and Mitch Edwards would be a very young ruck duo. Ollie Dempsey I've got in here. He's played seven games. He's, he's shown some good signs. Yet it is a pretty strong forward six in terms of like medium to small types. Um, I mean, he's not really small. He's 187, I think, Ollie Dempsey. But, you know, generally for the positions he'll be competing for, he's probably, you know, he's not over a, a closer Henry, a Myers, and a Stengel. And Parfit's an interesting one. I probably am pretty confident he'll be there at the age of 28. I think we've seen enough from him. Just played the nine games last year. Uh, but I'll back him in to likely be there. So to cover off some of the options that I that missed out on this team, um, we talked about Emerson Jecker from... From, in terms of medium defensive types, there's guys like Oscar Murdoch and uh, Usheen Mullen. Is that how you say his name? Forgive me. The Irish uh, import that they've got there. Only played a couple of games and I don't know how realistic it is, but he does have some upside, obviously. He was a very good prospect in the Irish competition. Uh, George Stevens, Lawson Humphreys, these guys, Mitch Hardy, James Willis, a lot of guys I just don't know that much about. I know the most about George Stevens. He could be there. He's very ready-made. He could probably play pretty early, uh, but that's probably the, you know, the, the midfield depth after that. Unless Geelong pluck some guns out of latent drafts, which they are so good at doing, uh, that's obviously some area that needs reinforcement. And then in terms of forwards, um, there's Ted Closey. I think he's a bit of a medium forward type. I don't know a whole heap about. They just drafted Oliver Wiltshire again. I don't know much about him. I think he was playing ammos in his draft year and stuff like that. And Phoenix Foster, like I suggested, a bit of a speculative toll there. So overall, the conclusions, like it's it's they're not in terrible shape, to be honest, uh, considering this is assuming no more drafting and trading. So in terms of what they do from here, in terms of like, should we they go through the draft? Should they trade free agency? I think a combination of all kind of makes sense, but I do think they do need to preserve their draft collateral. And I also think 
it so much depends on how they actually perform. Because if Geelong come out in 2024, and at least, you know, if they make finals, then suddenly what they do with their draft picks changes, in my opinion. By contrast, let's say if they, you know, shit the bed in 2024 and finish bottom four for the, like the first time ever, then I, that's where I would suggest really preserve that high draft pick. So it is contextual. It depends on what access to talent they get. But I still think, you know, probably picking up some value options, um, you know, like I said, maybe a journey ring recommend to just tie over that gap between Conway and, and um, uh, Reese Stanley, almost forgot his name again. And if they can attract like a good midfield prospect, like another Tanner Braun, we know Geelong do have this benefit of being able to attract uh, players to their club. I would keep a lookout for that. However, if, if we're talking that they have genuinely high draft picks through you know finishing low on the ladder i'm not saying that's going to happen uh but that's where i would really preserve it and try and inject even more quality youth into this team like a couple more conor o'sullivan's or jai clark's not necessarily the same position but that level of talent i think that's i think that's something that they're going to need to inject anyway guys that's my take on the cats uh yeah as i said overall conclusions a little bit better place than i thought um again they do have this knack a of attracting talent to their club and b getting those players to play deep into their careers which i think kind of makes this transition period a little bit easier for them and we just know that they're a strong organization that don't really fall down the ladder that much so i'm intrigued to see what happens in the next three years and uh it'd be i'll be keeping a close eye on them for sure but let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with from this video where do you see the cats in three years let me know as well you know underrated players that i just don't know about let me know in the comments that uh, it does help me out and uh and of course anything you disagree with as well but for now thank you for watching thank you for being subscribed and i'll see you in the next video Cheers.